Welcome back to the Humus Heritage, where we dig deep into the transformative secrets that turn ordinary gardeners into soil magicians. Today, I'm pulling back the curtain on what might be the most game-changing composting revelation you'll encounter this year. If you've ever felt frustrated waiting months for your compost pile to transform into that coveted black gold, or if you've watched your garden waste pile up while your beds desperately cry out for nutrients, what I'm about to share will revolutionize your entire approach to soil building. This isn't another incremental improvement or minor tweak to traditional methods. This is the Berkeley method, a scientifically proven technique that collapses the composting timeline from seasons into mere weeks, delivering finished pathogen-free compost in as little as 14 to 18 days. For generations, gardeners have accepted a fundamental truth about composting. Good things come to those who wait. We've been conditioned to believe that creating quality compost requires patience measured in months or even years, that the slow decay of organic matter is simply nature's pace, and we must accept it. Traditional compost bins become forgotten corners of the garden, their contents breaking down at a glacial speed, while we continuously add more material to the top, never quite reaching the finished product at the bottom. This conventional wisdom has led countless gardeners to abandon composting altogether, instead bagging their precious garden waste for municipal collection, or, worse, letting it accumulate in unsightly piles that become breeding grounds for pests, rather than productive soil amendments. So, the truth is this slow process isn't, you know, inevitable. It's really just the result of suboptimal conditions where microbial activity kind of proceeds at a leisurely pace because the organisms responsible for decomposition just don't have the ideal environment to thrive. Traditional cold composting, well, it happens almost by accident, relying on whatever microorganisms happen to colonize the pile and whatever conditions naturally develop. The Berkeley method, on the other hand, flips this entire paradigm by deliberately engineering the perfect storm of conditions that, honestly, supercharge microbial activity to levels that seem almost miraculous. At the heart of the Berkeley method lies a pretty profound understanding of thermophilic microorganisms. These are the heat-loving bacteria that become incredibly active at temperatures between 130 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. When you create the precise conditions these microscopic powerhouses need to flourish, they multiply exponentially and devour organic matter at rates that would make conventional composting seem like, well, slow motion. The secret isn't a single magic ingredient or mysterious additive. Instead, it's the orchestration of four critical factors working in perfect harmony, proper carbon to nitrogen ratios, optimal moisture levels, adequate pile size for heat retention, and most crucially, frequent aeration through turning. Think of your compost pile as a living furnace. The thermophilic bacteria are the flames. Organic matter is the fuel. Oxygen is the air that feeds the fire. Moisture is the regulator and the pile's size is the insulation that keeps everything burning hot. When you build a pile approximately one cubic meter in volume, roughly three feet in all dimensions, you create enough mass to generate and retain the tremendous heat these organisms produce. This isn't arbitrary. Smaller piles lose heat too quickly to the surrounding environment while maintaining proper conditions in larger piles becomes prohibitively difficult for most home gardeners. At this sweet spot size, the internal temperature rockets upward, creating an environment where decomposition happens at breathtaking speed. All right, so the journey to 14-day compost begins with proper material preparation and pile construction. Start by gathering both your carbon-rich brown materials, such as dry leaves, straw, wood chips, or shredded paper, and your nitrogen-rich green materials, including fresh grass clippings, vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, and animal manures. Now, the critical step that most gardeners skip is shredding or chopping all materials into pieces no larger than one to one and a half inches. 
This dramatically increases the surface area available for microbial colonization and allows decomposition to proceed from multiple entry points rather than slowly working inward from the outside of large chunks. As you construct your pile, think in terms of achieving that magical 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. While you don't need laboratory precision, a practical approach involves mixing roughly one part green material with two to three parts brown material by volume. Layer these materials together, rather than segregating them into distinct strata, which ensures better distribution and prevents nitrogen-rich pockets from becoming anaerobic problem zones. As you build each layer, thoroughly moisten the materials until they feel like a wrung-out sponge, damp throughout but not dripping when squeezed. This moisture level is non-negotiable because microorganisms require water for their metabolic processes, yet excess water drowns them by displacing oxygen from the air spaces between particles. Once your cubic meter pile stands complete, resist the temptation to interfere for the first four to five days. During this initial period, the microbial population explodes and the temperature climbs dramatically often reaching 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit at the pile's core. You'll actually be able to feel the heat radiating from the surface if you hold your hand near it. After this initial heating period comes the defining characteristic of the Berkeley method, turning the pile every two days without fail. This frequent aeration serves multiple purposes. It replenishes oxygen that microorganisms have consumed, redistributes moisture that may have concentrated in certain areas, and most importantly, it moves cooler outer material to the hot center while bringing the center material to the edges, ensuring every particle experiences the high temperature treatment necessary to kill pathogens, weed seeds, and pest eggs. Each turning session represents both the physical heart of this method and, honestly, its most labor-intensive requirement. Using a garden fork, or a specialized compost aerating tool, you'll want to systematically dismantle the pile and reconstruct it, making sure to consciously move what was on the outside to the center of the rebuilt pile. This process usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes per turn, and if done right, should result in an immediate temperature spike in the following hours as those freshly oxygenated microorganisms get right back to their frantic activity. If you notice the temperature failing to rebound after a turn, it's time to investigate potential issues. Insufficient moisture can cause the pile to dry out and microbial activity to stall, which you can remedy by thoroughly watering during the next turn. On the other hand, an overly wet pile becomes compacted and anaerobic. Usually you'll notice some unpleasant ammonia or rotten egg smells. And that means you need to add dry carbon materials to absorb excess moisture and restore proper air spaces. Throughout the 18-day process, it's important to monitor your pile's temperature daily using a compost thermometer with a long probe that can reach the pile's center. The temperature trajectory pretty much tells you everything about your compost's progress. After the initial spike, temperatures should remain elevated between turns, climbing back toward 140 degrees after each aeration session. Around day 14, you'll notice temperatures beginning to decline despite continued turning, which signals that the readily decomposable materials have been consumed and the intensive thermophilic phase is, well, wrapping up. At this point, your compost has transformed from recognizable organic materials into a dark, crumbly substance with an earthy smell, completely unlike its original components. The Berkeley method produces what soil scientists call bacterially dominant compost, a product that's fundamentally different from the fungal dominant compost created through slower, cooler methods. This bacterial emphasis makes Berkeley compost particularly exceptional for vegetable gardens, annual beds, and really any situation where you want rapid nutrient availability and vigorous plant growth. The frequent turning and high temperatures favor bacterial reproduction over fungal network development creating a finished product that delivers nutrients in forms plants can immediately access. While some permaculture practitioners argue for fungal-dominant compost in forest gardens and around perennial plants, 
the reality is that most home gardeners cultivating vegetables, annual flowers, and actively managed beds will see superior results from this bacterial powerhouse. Beyond its nutritional profile, Berkeley Method Compost offers unmatched safety and reliability. The sustained high temperatures achieved through this process effectively sanitize the material, eliminating human and plant pathogens, parasites, and weed seeds that survive in traditional cold compost piles. This means you can confidently incorporate materials that would be risky in conventional composting, such as diseased plant material, though not virus plants, and manures from various animals, knowing the heat treatment has rendered them safe. The speed of the process also means you can time your compost production to match your garden's needs, creating batches specifically for spring planting preparations, fall soil building, or mid-season side dressing applications. Embracing the Berkeley method represents more than adopting a new technique. It fundamentally changes your relationship with garden waste and soil fertility. Instead of viewing fallen leaves, spent plants, and grass clippings as disposal problems, you'll recognize them as raw materials in an 18-day transformation that returns vitality to your soil. The method's predictability means you can plan your gardening activities around compost availability rather than hoping your traditional pile might be ready when you need it. Imagine starting a batch in early spring and having finished compost ready for your transplant holes or launching an autumn batch that will be perfect for top dressing beds before winter mulching. The initial investment in time and physical effort pays exponential dividends as you witness your soil structure improve, water retention increase, and plant vigor intensify with each application of this premium amendment. While the Berkeley method demands more labor than passive composting approaches, the concentrated effort over 18 days yields results equivalent to months of traditional composting, making it far more efficient in terms of time investment relative to output. As you gain experience, you'll develop systems that streamline the process, from material stockpiling strategies to ergonomic turning techniques that make the work manageable rather than exhausting. The knowledge you've gained today places you among a select group of gardeners who understand that rapid, high-quality composting isn't magic or fantasy. It's applied science accessible to anyone willing to commit to the process. I encourage you to start your first Berkeley Method pile this week and really experience firsthand the satisfaction of witnessing dramatic transformation in your organic materials. Document your journey noting temperature progressions, observing material breakdown, and ultimately celebrating when you spread that dark, crumbly compost across your beds, knowing you created it in less time than most people believe possible. If this guide has opened your eyes to new possibilities in your gardening practice, please subscribe to the Humus Heritage channel so you never miss our deep dives into transformative growing techniques. And hey, Share this video with fellow gardeners who are ready to break free from composting frustration and embrace a method that actually delivers on its promises. Together, we're building a community of informed growers who understand that healthy soil isn't a lucky accident, but the result of knowledge applied with intention. Now get out there and start building that pile. Your garden's future begins with the heat you generate today.